Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Trailer Island Podcast. I am Matthew and today I'm joined as always by... you joined by Steve. And Alex. Hello chaps, how are we going today? Good, this is very strange it having is. you do the intro. Oh, it's... it feels... Oh, the power's going to go straight to my head. Um, how, how, how are we? Are we enjoying the island this week? Yeah, it seems, seems fairly, fairly normal. I'm not enjoying the new... St- Shift in status quo. I'm used to you, Alex, being the hunter gatherer, and now Matt's been doing it, and he's introing the podcast. It's just, I yeah, some like little bit of like yeah. I've been working on my basket weaving this week. I've and, noticed um, it's really coming along, and um, I just felt like you know Matthew probably yeah. you know could do the intro this I, week. I appreciate that. I hope I, I hope I lived up to expectations. <laughs> I'm not dis- like you look real good hunting animals. Oh, thanks, Steve. Real good. <laughs> oh, cheers. Um, <laughs> And the way you pick varies as well. <laughs> Second it's to that none. slight bend in the hips. It's yeah. Wow. Bend and snap. <laughs> well, maybe we've all been here too long. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, uh, we're here to talk about movies and their trailers. That's what we do on this podcast. And um, right. this week we've got, I think, it's, I think it's an interesting one. I think this film's... Mm. Like, it's, it's an interesting one, It was one, a 2019 say. release, but released 2020 in Australia. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it, it, made a, it made a bit of a splash when I think it arrived. It's a Guy Ritchie film, so yeah. he's obviously oh, he's of renown. Um, who would like to introduce the film? I'll do it because I suggested it. This film <laughs> is called The Gentleman. I want you to play a game with me, Ray. I don't want to play a game. Oh, please. No. I said play a game with me, Ray. Man. Right. Lovely. I want you to imagine a character. Your boss, Mickey Pearson. You're too smart to be blackmailing us, Fletcher. Yeah. Sweet Mary Jane is my vice. Your poison, on the other hand, is and always has been the destroyer of worlds. You're out of touch, and I would like you to consider an offer. I am not for sale. The plot begins to thicken. Now, I can't be specific about the heroes and zeros, but our protagonist is a hungry animal. (laughs) There is a lot of money hanging in the balance. Our antagonist explodes on the scene like a millennial firework and has indirectly started a war. I think you need to see this, boss. I still want to make a farm. How do they find it? Making inquiries. His name is Fahok. It was spelled with a PA, so it sounds like Fahok. Please! Sorry, Fahok. Kanda Fahok. Please! If you smell smoke, it's because there's a fire. So you're going to have to stamp that out quickly. These people are going to clean house, and you are part of that house. Oh, it's really warming up now, isn't it? There's only one rule in this jungle. When the lion's hungry, he eats. One of her associates had an accident. So you killed someone? No, it was the gravity that killed him. Oh, that's a fun trailer. It's very guy, Richie. Because they use Cream's, or well, Eric Clapton's Sunshine of Your Love, mm. and which is not in the film at No, it all. isn't, no. is it? No. And every time I hear Eric Clapton, it's like, my dad looks a lot like Eric Clapton. <laughs> just, that's not relevant at all, but he looks a lot like him. Anyway. Well, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever spot Eric Clapton in the streets... Okay. Don't be confused. And if I if I yell out, <laughs> and it turns out it's Eric Clapton, you'll be like, oh, look. oh, I was hoping to talk to Alex's dad, but I guess I'll talk to you. <laughs> so I don't think we've ever like a, a trailer has ever been so like on this podcast in particular. This is probably the most faithful trailer I've seen to a movie in terms of style. I don't like it, this matches up to what we saw in the film to a D. The, the sort of freeze frames and characters and the voiceover mm-hmm. that Hugh Grant is doing. Like, yeah, actually, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, well, the, the criticism <laughs> I have of this is that the trailer makes it out to be a really cool, very British crime, that very Guy Ritchie British crime. But the film itself doesn't feel like a British crime. Still, like It could be just set in America with some British characters. I would disagree. I don't know. I, There's like, f- I don't. I don't feel like. Okay, you look at a Guy Ritchie film like Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, Snatch, yeah. like those sort of films that are that are this style. They feel like they're that universe. To me, like though, because those films are very much about the people under the kingpins and the things that they're facing and the real grimy stuff. This feels like a bit of sanitized to me. I would disagree. I, I do. I, it, it has the. 
It has the Cockney feel to it still. It's got it's got you know Matthew McConaughey. Well, uh, yeah, it's got Matthew McConaughey. He's, he's taking advantage of like of lords and ladies without without money. And you've got like the really seedy underbelly that's sort of starting to get explored as well. You've got like Cockney children that are uh, also involved with the crime. You've got Colin Farrell's like mob as well, who are just interesting characters. <laughs> well, he's a very interesting character. Yeah. In this. He's a cool character in this. Yeah. I think I'm getting ahead of it. Like the film itself is focuses on Matthew McConaughey's fa- uh, character, which is, his name is um, Mickey Pearson. Uh-huh. And he's a weed dealer in. UK, mm. uh, and he is trying to get out. He's he's a very lucrative uh, producer of marijuana. Yeah, and I guess yeah, the crux of it, he's trying to organise a deal to, yeah, as you say, he's get looking out for of a business. successor, and that's where everything starts to unravel. Yeah, and then yeah, some comedic hijinks in ensue. So Hugh Grant and Charlie <laughs> and Charlie Hunman, I think that's his Hunnam. last name. H- Hunman, Hunnam, Hunnam. Yep, Charlie Hunnam. Those two together in this film is a casting decision, I think, made in heaven. Oh. <laughs> they bounce off of each other so incredibly well. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever seen Hugh Grant act this well before. He looks like he is really enjoying yeah. this. Yeah. Like it was probably a day or two on set because he doesn't have to do much, but he looks like he was just absolutely enjoying uh, this And film. I think he's the highlight of the movie, to be honest. I, I, well, I, to that, I was going to say Charlie Hunnam. I, he I is good, yeah. Mind you, I have not seen Charlie Hunnam in anything. <laughs> oh, oh, Pacific yeah. Rim, Pacific Rim. Is he in that? But um, he he was he was a really pleasant surprise in this film. Yeah, he's very very. Um, he's a good. Is he is he the protagonist? No, I think is, Mickey Pearson is. You reckon McConaughey's a protagonist? Yeah, okay. Well, in in, in typical Guy Ritchie fashion, a, a protagonist is supposed to have a, an arc where they change, but. Usually in a Guy Ritchie film, there's not real, there's not really too much change to any characters. No, no, and, and strangely, it works really well. Yeah, it works incredibly well. In fact, like mm-hmm. the, the characters in this in this film are incredibly rich. Yeah, great characters. Um, I'm not sure who wrote this. I'm not sure if Guy Ritchie had a hand in writing this. It's just a delight to see these characters just manipulate each other yeah. and go about their business. It's uh, very. F- it, well, yeah, no, it, it's funny. It is funny. It's a funny. Uh, there are some funny moments in this film. Now, and then it's also very violent. It was well. very, very violent. Now, sorry, I've, I haven't said anything the last couple of minutes because I've just been looking at what Charlie Hunter's... And him being in Pacific Rim has really confused me. <laughs> he was <laughs> like, trying to do an Australian accent and that. It's oh, just terrible. And I, 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 don't, I don't know how to feel about that at that's all. Right. And that's right. You don't need to remember Pacific Rim. It's a terrible movie. Anyway. He was also... You in, need to get out right uh, now. He was also in King Arthur. That was another Guy Ritchie, which film. is another Guy Ritchie film. And what, uh, how was he in that? He he's actually quite good in that. Yeah. He from memory goes through. It's, it's still going for that kind of Cockney kind of attitude thing. This film, he's much more toned down. Mm-hmm. In that one, he's a bit overboard in places. That King Arthur film is an interesting one. It's a different topic, but I feel like it's actually a fairly decent movie, which it just got slammed. Yeah. When it came out. By the um, way, Charlie Hunnam didn't do... The, he wasn't the Australian guy in Pacific Rim. Oh, wasn't he? He was the American lead. Well, that's how much I remember that movie. I've never seen Pacific Rim. Oh, oh. I've seen all the Transformers, though. <laughs> <laughs> seen all of those multiple times. Don't it, worry about Pacific Rim 2. Just watch the first one. Oh, Matthew. That's a, it's a Del Toro film, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's really good. All right, fine. I'll watch it. Uh, anyway, the gentleman, gangster movie, Guy Ritchie, yes. great, act, great actors, great characters. So lots far. of lots of characters to sort of follow. In yeah, this. yeah, you, did, a lot of threads. Like when in conversations when they're talking about who's doing, who is what, and what is the reveal of this, and blah blah blah. I know I was a bit like, wait, hang on, who was that person? I've always had that problem with Guy Ritchie, especially gangster films. Yeah, it's usually really really hard to keep track of who's doing what and snatch. Mm. I love Snatch. Yeah. So, the this, film. This film actually, you know, talking to Alex about how this doesn't have that grimy feel. Yeah. This film actually reminded me a lot more of Layer Cake. Okay. okay yeah. Which is a Matthew Vaughan yeah. film. Because mm. Layer Cake also, again, it's a gangster film. They're all drug Produced dealers. by Guy Ritchie. I think it was, yeah. yeah. But that, so it's a very similar vibe to this movie, but it's, it is actually to look at quite clean. Yeah. And I think this film is exactly the same. Again, it's like it's all these sort of dodgy people doing very dodgy things, but the film is very slick, 
everything's like, all the shots are really well you know shot and there's no like handheld or anything like that it's all sweeping camera moves that kind of thing you know um, yeah, it's I, like like I said, I just, it feels a bit clean for the guy Richie Dirty. Mm. Like this is definitely a return to that cinematic universe of gangsters in, yeah. in Britain, which um, I was looking forward to. Yeah, oh no, absolutely. Like it, it certainly didn't put me off in any way that I knew that's where they were heading with it. But it just and maybe that's what they were going for with because they were dealing with people who were at the top. Mm-hmm. It's not people who are the people at the bottom in the all, gutter. Yeah. All the dirty workers. All the dirty workers. Yeah. It is mainly focuses on the kingpin people. And in the end, they're all bad people. Oh, yeah. There's no like actual... There's, like, when you think about it, they're all drug runners. And at what point do you consider them being good people? Despite, there's a really interesting scene where they're sitting down with uh, royalty or some sort. And they're talking about all the donations they've made for extra wings on hospitals mm. and stuff. Oh. And... <laughs> Um, I just thought, like, how do you, how do these situations end up? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm not an expert, but it's it's this film says a lot, shall we say, perhaps. <laughs> but it's an interesting it's an interesting exercise in sort of who do you go for, who do you you know root for, like you know who you who your favorite character is can change really in this movie at any one point. So it's it's just a rich tapestry. Yeah. What I found confusing was the main sort of push for mickey to get out of the business is the fact that he deals weed and weed especially in the film they go well this is going to be legal and within the decade anyway so Mm. you you, you're not going to need to be a a gangster and so mickey's thinking well i've already got a past with you know violence and and drugs and all that so i need to get out and this business needs to go to someone more legitimate what i found are we going to go into spoilers here because i (sighs) No, uh, let's let's not because there are some really good twists and turns. Yeah, in this. I feel like this um, is not to like derail what you're going to say, Steve. I feel, well, but... I, it it just it's made redundant in the end of the film, without mm. going into it too far. Okay, it's made redundant. That 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 motivation for that character is made redundant. Okay, but does it matter at that? Because well, I mean, well, it, it, it it turns out that way due to the things that happen in the film, though. It's true. So it sort of you know is anyone really. In a different place than when they start. Oh, I guess they are, but you know, no one's really won in any of this. No. Well, maybe. Uh, maybe not. No, I don't think so. It's, it's, it's you know, no. it's basically Hugh Grant doesn't get to eat his steak. Doesn't he eat his steak? And he eats like two of those steaks. Oh, does, does he eat yeah. it? Does he? Oh. <laughs> that ma- actually, the food in this movie made me really hungry. The I suits actually- in this movie made me want to dress in suits. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, the clothing is is and the costuming is. Uh, I, d- I did really, nice. I did really enjoy the pacing that's in this. Like the yeah. time that conversations are allowed to happen and and be quite natural. You know, like they yeah. go from talking about all these gangster things to then the furniture you know that they're, <laughs> that they're surrounded by so i thought you know that was quite nice and like that was you know guy Ritchie has a really good way of letting those natural conversations happen yeah but what really confused me what it didn't confuse me i was sort of like okay well where are you going with this is that you know in the first half an hour you get those the style that guy Ritchie really sort of brought mm. into other things are like quick cuts to things that are just aesthetic to the scene they're not they don't really tell you anything like when they're talking about different uh, aspect ratios. The film changes into oh, those yeah. aspect ratios when about that. Uh, when Hugh Grant's character is telling the story. He's like, well, you know, it's got to be four by three. I and love that, that bit. <laughs> and like, it all does that. And they and that all works really well. Mm. But it only happens in that first sort of 10, 20 minutes. That's a good point. It doesn't continue that. It's like they've gone, okay, we're going to do this style. Like with those freeze frames when you're introduced yeah, to the character yeah. and stuff. And, you know, it doesn't it doesn't keep it up. I I would disagree. Uh, hmm. There, there, the, it does go on a little longer than I think you're giving it credit for. Like there, there are elements okay. to the to the movie where, you know, for example, when the the group of thugs sort of jump into the the weed farm and they're filming the 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 fight there. Yeah. That's that's a really stylized sort of filmmaking. Okay, oh, there. no, there is that like that music video that appears yeah. mid mid film. Like okay, yeah, this is taking like all right, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's go. It, I don't know. I just felt like either it didn't do it enough, or I, I don't know. It was okay. just it was just seemed it seemed a bit random. Mm-hmm. It seemed like someone was making a gangster film and put 
Guy Ritchie element in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you think Guy Ritchie was uh, parodying himself? Uh, I don't want to say that because it is a, it is a good movie. And plus, <laughs> like, I don't want him to try and find me. <laughs> like, I feel like that's, you know, he a made He made two Sherlock Holmes films. He'll know how to find you. True. He's got Jason Statham on his payroll as well. He'll find you. Oh, dear. Mm. I, for one, was really, really... I, I've been... I've been pining for a good Guy Ritchie English gangster film for a very long time, and I, I'm glad. Um, I I'm still gl- am. I'm glad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow! Oh, I'm glad Guy Ritchie has sort of stretched his legs with Sherlock Holmes and and, and King Arthur. Yeah, Man from Uncle was really really good as I well. I still haven't seen that. Really? Yeah, neither have I. Excellent film. Okay. Um, but I'm glad he's he's this this felt right. Yeah, it see, felt it felt familiar. It felt warm and cozy. <laughs> you know what? It felt like he'd made Hollywood films since his last batch of British gangster films. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's got that tang of cleanliness to it. So everything's you know, there's some really good you know green screen stuff. You know it's there and it's just done really well. The sets are nice. I just I just needed something a bit more dirty in it. It just okay. needed just a bit more grit. To okay. I needed to believe that it really was the underworld. So, like, so but, 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 but saying that, like, like Charlie Hunman's character, what's, it, what's his name? Not it's Ray. Charlie Hull- uh, yeah, so that's what, yeah, it's Ray. Ray. Cause it's I, Ray. Only because uh, I, only I can picture play, Hugh Grant saying, play a game with me, Ray. Play a game with me, Ray. Please play a game <laughs> with me, Ray. Can you do the nasal bit of it? Like, like, oh, no, probably not. not. Not on the spot. If I could practice. So I, I, I really like Ray's character because he felt like that underling. Yeah. But he is like you feel how good he is. As oh like, yeah! Oh my He's gosh. in control. He is in control. Like the scene where they're in that um, in the junkie apartment. Yeah, is like the tension in that is fantastic. Like you can mm. feel the menace mm-hmm. behind that. Mm-hmm. And when they're having that conversation about, he's like, "No, you're going to go to that place." And you could see him. He does a really good thing where he has like this this twitch. Yeah. To like the idea of having to do with ice addicts. Yeah, he's like, I like he's just the toughest guy in the yeah. crew. He's like, I don't want to do it. Yeah, like, I can't. I don't want to do it. And like you, so you see these vulnerabilities. And I thought, you know, all that stuff was played really well. It was really now, good. Talk, you mentioned grit before. Now I know you were obviously meaning aesthetics, but we should also mention how bad the language is. Oh yeah, oh, in my this word. movie, now, how bloody it is as well, and how bloody. Now obviously this is a gangster film. You expect it. I don't think I've ever heard so much foul language in one movie. It was. Profanity, and we're not talking F word. We're talking yeah. the C word. Yeah, there, there is. This is not a film to show your your kids. No, <laughs> I think if what age could you? I mean, is it an R eighteen film? No, or is it an fifteen plus? Which but... really surprises me because for the action, like I was shocked yeah. at the number of profanities that it's, were. It, I have to admit, I think it even goes over. I think it's even too much. To I think honest. it's a bit overboard. Yeah, yeah. I love it. But I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, but you're I'm from a potty mouth anyway. Like I say, so. You're from country Australia, so. What did you call me? Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, stun, no. stun silence is terrific after that. No, I, I thought that um, perhaps they were trying to compensate for how clean the film looks. It was like, oh, we, you know, this is a gangster film. People expect this kind of violence and language, and they maybe overdid it. And so, sort of, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I don't think, like, mm. I mean, sure, people might talk like that, but you know, it's, it is meant to, you know, let's not be too dirty. <laughs> yeah, have some, you know, they're, they're high quality gangsters in this. Like, you'd yeah. think that there'd be, you know, some, eh, anyway. No, I just, I just, yeah, like the, it, it sort of shocked me a bit. I was expecting it was like, oh, wow, okay, guys, you can, you can stop now. Just talk, just talk nicely to one another. You yeah. know, I now and talking about all that stuff, like the music in this, I don't have anything remarkably memorable about the music in this. No, but, because the trailer has such a cool yeah. song yeah. in it, and then the film itself, I'm like, I had remembered nothing about. The they music. do use a lot of pop music in it, don't they? They do. Do yeah. they? Okay. I, I don't remember any incident. I know there is some, but I can't remember any incidental actually like orchestrated music for the film no it's a lot of sort of rock songs but it is it's it's very varied it you know jumps into rock soundtracks into country and then you know you've obviously got the rap stuff there as well uh from the kids under can we talk about colin farrow colin absolutely we can he was he was just darling so talking about like yeah talking (laughs) to people like hugh grant who just are loving their time on set he was colin farrell He's, did he even get paid? Did he just turn up because he really wanted to do it? Like, <laughs> Colin Farrell should never, ever be a leading man. He should always and every time just stick to the supporting roles. He's a, he should be a character actor. 
and that's what those are the roles where he shines. He so shines they, in this. He definitely shines in this. He was the lead in In Bruges. Oh, that, actually, he's terrific in that movie. But he's, he's more of a double act though with Brendan Gleeson. But he's not. A, he's not a blockbuster action star like he was trying to be fifteen years ago. Oh, he's total he's, recall. He's definitely an actor. Like he's, yeah, he's, he's an actor's actor. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Like he just does that wonderful job of just being in the film. Actually, his performance in this does actually remind me of his performance in in Bruges. Yeah. Um, I hadn't, Which thought, is I hadn't thought of that. An equally challenging film, <laughs> but that that is a slow burner. That one. That in is Bruges a, is a very slow. Very burner. rewarding though. Very rewarding. Yeah. Anyway, that's a that's a different. So I'm just movie. thinking about the scenes with the Americans in that film. <laughs> it's very good. That sequence where he's in the little sort of local. I don't know what it is. Um, a fish, fish, fish and chip shop, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he sort of teaches these little young guys a lesson. It's like, oh, that's that was terrific fun, you know, just to watch that unfold because he's completely in control of the situation. And he, but he also does that kind of mocking kind of. Yeah. I don't know how best to describe it, really, but it is. It's good. It's good writing and good acting. I love um, how genuinely apologetic he is when his 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 underlings uh, yeah, I bugger think, up. I think that's it. Yeah, and he he's quite yeah. apologetic to the people who are actually working there as well. Yeah. I was like, oh, so he's a nice guy. He's trying to do good in his community, but yeah. he's you know got a shady <laughs> past. But yeah, you're right, Steve. When um, he has his own little crew and they make a mistake, and he's he, his reaction is so perfect and spot on. He's like, he's so legitimately like, I am so sorry that they have done this. <laughs> I don't. I will punish them. You know, it's, it's very funny. Yeah. <laughs> does does the film tie it all together? Do we think? Does it is it something that comes full circle? Do we believe the story? Do we do we engage with this story? The the trailer tells us a lot. Like I was initially confused. Like is is Hugh Grant's character actually just telling us film story that he's got? Then I realized, okay, no, it is a real story <laughs> that he's trying to tell. You know, that framing was done really well. I you know would we agree that it ties it all quite well together? I think uh, like I said, I'm only a little bit. Um a little bit uh, uneasy with the conclusion to to uh, Mickey's story. It, it didn't really fit in well with the overall scheme of the film. I don't know that he grew as a character. I don't think any of them do. Oh. No. They're all pretty 2D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird that they would... Uh, I would guess that Matthew McConaughey is probably the highest paid actor on this film. That wouldn't be a stretch to imagine. And, uh, you know, you got probably people who are just really, really happy to be there, sort of acting circles around him. Oh, yeah, he's by far not the best performance in this movie. No, he's not bad, though. He's not bad, but he doesn't... I've seen him do better. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it has a... It does... This is the kind of film that does the big reveal at the end about how everything mm. unravels. Yeah. Yeah. And... I find it quite clunky. It, it is a little bit clunky, you know. It's but not... it's, it is still satisfying, though. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't think... find it clunky. Uh, they're, they're, like you said earlier, Alex, there are so many characters to follow. Like mm-hmm. the, the Matthew character, who's the person who's being groomed to perhaps take over. Mm. Um, and I just thought, I just kept getting lost in that. I was like, wait, what? What's happening with this guy now? What's going on? And that does develop, and it's like. There are so many like circles around circles, and oh. that's you know, that's a Guy Ritchie film for you though. Yeah, it, I, know. I, I think like yes, it is clunky, but a lot of people go to a Guy Ritchie film and they expect clunk. They <laughs> they expect a uh, a thread that's bored up like a quarter of the way through the f- through the film to reemerge in like the last yeah. ten minutes, and it happens in this film as well. It does. It is fun. I've seen this about. Oh, probably about four times now. Oh, really? Because um, I went to the cinema and then I, and I, I did really enjoy it. So I've got it on Blu-ray and I've watched it um, three times since then. And it is fun rewatching it to mm-hmm. un- unpack it. It's it, it's a sort of a gift that keeps on giving. Really, you got you got your food pouring in there. I always want to eat a steak when I'm watching yeah. this movie. <laughs> um, and you got you know wonderful characters, wonderful wonderful very quippy dialogue and some pretty good action scenes. Really, actually, like not not full on act. You know what I mean? Like sort of high octane moments in the movie that mm-hmm. are quite cool. Some very cool action sequences in this. Very interesting. You making fun of me? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. I was just agreeing with you. Like there are oh, some good action okay. sequences oh. in this film. Like that's, that's right. why I'm just saying that. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were just like quoting me back at me to like <laughs> make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is. Uh, it, I think a bit of slapstick as well, actually, just for good measure, is thrown in there sometimes. Um, I don't want to give anything away because some of them are quite surprising. It's like, ah, oh, that's that's really funny. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, it's not it's not a succinct movie, but it does have a lot to give. And and if you're willing to sort of sit back and just sort of at times let it wash over you, perhaps 
it's cool. If you are particularly not fond of foul language, I would consider yeah. uh, thinking twice about you, watching it. You will hear words said that you... It you, almost feels From a bit, Hugh Grant as well, from, of all people. From Hugh Grant as well. Such a gentleman. Not anymore. It's a bit numbing after a while. You're like, okay, yes. You start, yeah, and that's when... Yes, it, you're that's edgy, when it's, I get it. That's when it's overboard and they're just doing it for the sake of it. Um, it sometimes feels like, you know, how Tarantino sometimes does violence just for the sake of violence, yeah. which most of the time works, but sometimes you go, okay, just reel it in a little bit. It's like, Tarantino, you're showing feet again. Just, <laughs> just stop. You don't yeah. need to. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, you okay? No, I, was, I was watching another movie the other day and I, was, I sort of just picked up that this particular director as well was, was showing way too much foot. <laughs> I forgot I what the movie was though. I but. don't understand this <laughs> yeah. this feet footish uh, f- feet fetish thing. Feet footish. Read, thing. read about Tarantino and feet. Oh no, I'm well aware. Of oh, his, you're I'm aware well aware of, of his problems. Okay. Um, I just don't understand them. I really don't. I mean, I, I love oh, Coen Brothers. That's the one it was. Do I was watching like, the Big Lebowski. Do they like feet? And they were showing like uh, Jeff Bridges' feet, like as as often yeah. as they could. I mean, I, I can't. I mean, I love Dutch tilts. That's my film fetish, if you will. I'd love a good Dutch tilt. So maybe I do get it. I don't know. Mm. Uh, Ratings for the gentleman, gentleman. I can give you a Dutch yeah. oven. Ratings for the gentleman, gentleman. <laughs> oh, by the way, I've got to talk to you about your Blu-ray that you lent to me. Oh no! What? What did you do? You got sand in it. Yeah. Oh. oh Damn. No. <laughs> nice. uh, anyway, so ratings. Not that you're ever going to be able to watch it again on your Blu-ray, but anyway. Why have you done this to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, what are we rating out of? Broken Blu-ray discs? <laughs> Duh. Deal. <laughs> Deal. Uh, what about steaks? Yeah, all right, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Matthew, it's well, okay. I do. Didn't realise there were such steaks in lending a Blu-ray to a friend. <laughs> oh, you mean that sort of steaks? <laughs> right, a okay. friend? Who did you lend it to? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> self, self burn, those are rare. <laughs> it hurt itself in confusion. Uh, okay, steaks. Yes. Uh, look, I'll go first. Yeah, why not? Um, three and a half, four. Yeah. Okay. Three and a half, four. Uh, Pick one. I think I'm going to appreciate it more after watching it. Again, mm-hmm. watching it once probably is three and a half. I'd probably I can see myself watching it again and giving it four. Mm-hmm. So for now, I'll give it three and a half. Okay. Only I think we've talked about it as much as we need to. It wanted to do something stylistically in that Guy Ritchie style. There's nothing wrong with it, but if you're going to advertise it as a Guy Ritchie film, we're expecting something <laughs> Guy Ritchie about it, and we got that, but just with a, it, it got run through a filter. Mm, okay. Of some sort. And then the language again is just unnecessary. It's, Jesus it's, Christ, you it's, a, it's actually obscene. <laughs> oh, God, you old cudgers. <laughs> it's just too. It, I just feel like it's, it, it felt out of place. You know, someone using that amount of language in this context would probably get shot <laughs> at some point very soon. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, yeah, look, I think I've said enough about it. Three and a half. I, 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 if I if may go first, uh, second, even, um, I can count. Um, I'm going to give it four only because what I, well, chiefly it's actually Hugh Grant is one of my favorite things about this yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. But, um, and then secondary to that, and he's obviously a huge part of it, is just the comedy. I don't even, I don't even think it's the story. I just like how funny, intentionally funny this movie is. Mm-hmm. And so to me, it's almost like a really adult, almost repulsive because of the language version of Hot Fuzz in a way, even though Hot Fuzz <laughs> does have some pretty obscene language in it as well. Yeah, so it's a four for me because I just love the the slapstick, the comedy, and the characters are great. Steve. A really solid four. Uh, I'm happy to be back in a, in a Guy Ritchie <laughs> gangster film. I think, yeah, Hugh, Hugh Grant was fantastic. I didn't realize I was meant to like Charlie Hunnam, but now I'm like, okay, I've got to like Charlie Hunnam. And we've also got to accept the fact that fair beards are, are, are okay to be grown. He his beard is great. Yeah, isn't it's it? not dark or anything, but yeah. it, you, you can grow it like that. Um, Colin Farrell, fantastic music, pretty forgettable. Um, I I just I really liked being in the Guy Ritchie <laughs> film again. Uh, really sort of refreshing. Uh, yeah, easy four. Oh, lovely. That's a sneaky eleven and a half out of fifteen. Yeah. Steaks, hot damn, not bad. Dear, and eleven and a half wagyu. Now, uh, Alex and I, you and I need to go and have a chat. About your Blu-ray? Yeah. 
Uh, about how well, terrible Pacific Rim is? No. God. It's a good movie. Maybe we could do Pacific Rim as a time target and then we can put this uh, this argument to bed. Maybe we can, Matthew. <laughs> Maybe we can. After you've watched the extended version of Batman v Superman. Yeah, that's next. I've already seen it. <laughs> but I already know how terrible that film is. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Did you snap, snap Matt's DVD Blu-ray of that film as well? Uh, no, I melted it. <laughs> I actually uh, purposely gave that to your baby to um, to play with. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> Good, because that film is a children's toy. <laughs> oh, poor gentleman, it was fantastic, guys. Yeah, gen- can... gentleman was a good movie. Uh, don't watch it with kids. Watch it with uh, yourself or someone who's you know keen on those sort of films. <laughs> We've been the Trailer Island podcast. Uh, I've been Alex. I've been joined by Matthew, angry Matthew. <laughs> yes. Well, not yet. That's my name. Oh, you're angry. Oh, okay. oh, oh right, right. right. You're, you're angry, Matthew. Thanks, Steve. Uh, you can find <laughs> us at trailerisland.com.au. You can send us a message via there. Is there a film you want us to do? Please let us know. Send us a message. Send us an email. Contact us via the Facebook page. We would love to hear from you. Check out our socials as well. We uh, find them. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> anything else, boys? Have you got any tape? No, I don't. Oh, no, okay. We'll run out. Good night, everybody. <laughs> This is a Narrative Network podcast.